Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. A lot going on today, right? I would imagine. So, what happened? I mean, really, at the end of the day, what went down? One person. One person. One person was lost. And suddenly... 160 million Americans have a legitimate concern about whether or not their rights are about to be imperiled. That happened. That's what happened. One person. I'm fairly certain it's not supposed to work that way. I'm fairly certain that one person is not supposed to serve as a hedge, as the check in our checks and balances. Shouldn't come down to one person at any point in time. What does that tell us? that there's too much power in too few hands. That's the key takeaway here. If there's a lesson to be learned here, that's it. The problem is I'm afraid it's going to be lost among the tragedy and the upheaval and the political jockeying that is certainly going to occur. Too much power in too few hands. There is no reason for the loss of one person to jeopardize the rights of that many people. Something is wrong. Something is broke. So how do we fix it? Right. That's the question. And it's funny. It's funny. Because I recently saw somebody talking about this channel. I said, all I really do is map out some key points that I want to hit and then wait for current events to be able to make me talk about those points. And when you say it like that, it sounds like it should be a whole lot easier. But, I mean, that's, that's pretty accurate. I mean, to be honest, that kind of is the way I do things. This current path started with uh, the video where I was talking about a political compass. And it was supposed to end here. Now, I had no idea we were going to have such a powerful illustration of the point. But yeah, I mean, that it occurred. When I made that video, a whole bunch of people took that test. And a lot of them posted it to Twitter. Posted the image. Showed where their little dot was. Pretty much everybody, I mean, all the ones I saw, were... Uh, bottom left. How far left, how far bottom, that varied a little, but bottom left. So, uh, why are there so many debates down in the comments section? You know, using that bus analogy, we're all headed in the same direction. We should be able to ride the bus together. See, this is a little different because there's two main groups of people that watch this channel. Those who are in favor and very supportive and very active in electoral politics. And those who believe that more tangible action is how you actually create change. But both headed bottom left. The, uh, the thing is here, we're not talking about that bus analogy. Not the same way anymore. What we're talking about is two buses that decided to take different roads to get to the same spot. And there's uh, a lot of bickering between the buses at times. The comments section, it's, it's entertaining to watch. Here's the thing. Right now, I'm sure that those who are heavily into electoral politics are looking at those who aren't and are like, yeah, how's that protest vote going? Or don't you wish you voted? Or whatever. Because this, this had such a big impact. 
and this is a tangible result of the last election. Electoral politics is important. That's, that's the message there. And there's also the belief that, you know, you're never just going to be able to ignore the government and do things your own way. Now, on the other side, you have them looking at those who are in electoral politics and saying, yeah, how'd that work out for you? Doesn't look like it protected your rights very well. And probably wanting to say there's no way you can vote your way out of this. And there's some truth to that too. Trump is the culmination of years of this system consolidating power and becoming more and more authoritarian. All it took was for somebody of his ilk to get in office. And we're here. So you probably can't vote your way out of this. I'm not going to say it's impossible, but I'm going to say it's highly unlikely. Those who are on the bottom left and those who vote that way, these are going to be supporters of, you know, Jim Perlman or Shahid or AOC, these types, right? If you want that to progress, if you want to get those kind of candidates, not just do you have to battle the conservatives, you have to battle those within the Democratic establishment. You know who you need to do that? People who are really good at obtaining immediate tangible results. Grassroots networking. The people who really aren't that much into electoral politics. Because if you want those type of people getting up there, you're going to need them. And those who, uh, let's just say, aren't fond of those type of politics, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I get where you're coming from. But at the same time, wouldn't it be nice to have some breathing room? I think everybody watching this channel knows that four more years of Trump is going to be chaotic, to say the least. If you want to build that separate power structure, you want to go that way with it. It would be nice to have some breathing room. At the very least, it would be nice to have people in electoral politics who are fighting a holding action, trying to stop the government from becoming more and more intrusive, more and more powerful. Would be nice. It's a diversity of tactics. This isn't one bus with two people on it getting off at different stops. Those who are into uh, more direct forms of organizing need to understand that most of the people who are into electoral politics that are watching this channel, if they could, they would vote in the system you want. They believe that's the way to get there. And those who are just very much in favor of voting, you're looking over at them, understand they're trying to build what you want without the government. It's two buses headed to the same spot. I'm not sure why we're so eager to run each other off the road. I understand there are significant differences in philosophy. But at the end of the day, the goal is the same for most people watching this channel. Most people, the, uh, the differences are pretty small. Right now, both of these groups, they need to start working to take the power back. That needs to be the goal. Because if one person can be lost and in peril this many people's rights, 
imagine what's going to happen when you have somebody who is uh, willing to force a lot of people out to get their way. There's too much power in too few hands. And yeah, we absolutely need those other power structures that we can rely on. We need those local organizations that can see us through and that we can grow from. But right now, we certainly need people fighting a holding action. We need people out there trying to stop the creep. Because that's what it is. It's a slow movement that grants more and more authoritarian power to the government. Even if Biden wins, it's not over. It's not over because another Trump can win in four years. It doesn't end. We have got to limit the power. We have to disperse it at the very least. Get it in more hands. Because this is unacceptable. This is a recipe for disaster. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good night.